What's going on guys? This is Psyche. So today I just wanted to kind of get some stuff on my chest about this new DLC. After playing with it for a couple days, there are some things that just feel like that need to be addressed. Now I apologize if this video feels more like a rant because it probably is. Um, I'm totally unprepared for this and that's probably also the reason why the video itself is not very well edited. So first and foremost, I just wanted to get the good stuff out of the way first because I don't like to be negative. So regarding the newest DLC, I think the level design, the new bosses, are really well done. Um, it's unlike anything we've seen in the game so far, and we can always expect that kind of quality from Motion Twin. Just in terms of like the level design, the aesthetics, the music are all really good. Especially the lighthouse level. I think the chase sequence is very unique in terms of gameplay. And honestly, in terms of value, I think you're getting as much value with this DLC than any of the other two. Now, all of this is nice, but after listening to what the community has to say, after thinking about a lot of these things for myself, there were some concerns I had regarding this DLC. Now, apart from the game freezing for 15 seconds whenever I enter a new area, as well as some lag happening in the infested shipwreck, one thing that I was kind of disappointed by was the ending. So Queen of the Sea is supposed to be the final trilogy to the DLC saga. First we had Bad Seed and then we had Fatal Falls. Now every bit of lore that's being built up is going to come to a close with this DLC. So I expected that the Beheaded was finally going to leave the island. You know, it's kind of like this big thing that everybody's hyping up, but we didn't actually get that. Like, the queen fight is cool and all, and there are some special interactions. Like, if you go to her with the king's outfit, she'll say something different. If you knock her off the cliff as the final blow, then you will transition right into the cutscene. So I think that's pretty cool. But the thing is though, no matter which build you played, no matter which outfit you wear, no matter which boss cell level that you're on, the ending is exactly the same. Now, one thing that I really praise Dead Cells for is its difficulty progression. Something that I really enjoy about 5BC is that there is content at the end of the level that's only available to you on this specific difficulty. So it actually makes you feel rewarded for getting to this point, because I thought surely this ending was going to be different if you beat it on 5BC, right? Because it's kind of like this grand finale to things. But nope, this ending is actually just what we got, and for the most part, it feels incomplete. It, it almost feels like there's more to this story. I'm not sure if we're getting another DLC. They did confirm that this is going to be the last paid DLC. So again, the ending was just something that I felt like I wasn't too satisfied with. And the second concern I had, and this is probably the most glaring one of all, is their choice of weapon design. So during these past couple days, I actually had the opportunity to try out every single weapon that the DLC added. There was like a hook hand, there was the shark, there was a wrecking ball. But something that I noticed, a trend that Motion Twin seems to be going down in, is this gimmick with weapons where the best effect of a weapon comes from like its last hit in the combo. So we've seen this with Oven Axe as well as the Tombstone. Just deal a bunch of slow sluggish hits and then you eventually deal the real damage. And then with this DLC, they added even more of this. So the shark will launch itself forward on the third hit and it will cause something to bleed and root itself. You will throw the wrecking ball on your third hit and then recall it back on the fourth. For the deck of cards, you throw cards until the third hit and then you recall them back on the fourth. The trident, you don't get the piercing effect until the second hit and the first hit of its combo is just kind of there. Same goes for the hook hand, you get its effect on the third hit. Now you might wonder what is the issue for this and for the most part, I don't have an issue if this is the path that they're going down. I do have an issue, however, if the payoff for these effects is not worth it. So let's take a look at the Wrecking Ball, okay? If it takes this slow to swing it even once, then the payoff better be the best payoff I've ever seen in a weapon. Except at the moment, it doesn't do that. So I went into the Queen boss fight, at least in the practice room with the Wrecking Ball, as well as the Shark. Notice how I cannot even get a single hit in because I just don't have enough time, the range isn't enough, or the Queen just simply moves out of the way. So this is a huge problem for survival builds because another thing that I noticed about the new areas, after going through them a lot of times on 5BC, is that I found out that not all builds are suited for these biomes. So for the Infested Shipwreck, for example, your best strategy is to just kill the enemy enemies before they even do anything because you have the mutineers that break the floors, they throw their anchors at you, you also got the bombers that destroy the coral floors, disrupting the terrain. It's just a lot that you have to deal with if you leave them unattended. So the thing is though, this biome will become harder if you cannot deal with these monsters in a fast and flexible manner. 
And the same goes for the lighthouse fight as well. Like, I enjoy this fight for what it is. It's definitely one of the most interesting fights we've seen in the game. However, it's also really chaotic. This is probably the one fight I cannot predict the enemy move patterns, which means you are required to be very fast and flexible in this fight as well. Given this, a lot of the slower weapons that require some setup, it's just not gonna work. Now I tried going here with the trident except I died in that run, because I found out that even the trident is just too slow and it doesn't do enough damage. The same goes for the queen fight actually, because the problem is that if you're going to make content that's suited for fast and responsive playstyles, then why would you make weapons that don't reflect that? If you're your character's ground slam attack does more damage than a single hit from the shark, then I think there's something wrong with that. You'll notice that a trend during my tier lists is that I find that the better weapons have fast, consistent, immediate effects. You don't have to wait until like the third or fourth hit for the effect to actually come in. It doesn't have to be the most powerful, it just has to be consistent. And that's really all I'm looking for in a good build. But I find out that the weapons that they introduce don't actually do this. And I'm afraid that this might be a trend that they might do going forward because for the most part, after listening to the community, I'm positive that they're going to change it, that they're going to buff these weapons. So anyways, I'll be holding off a lot of the weapon showcases for now because I'm not sure how they intend to approach these issues going forward. But anyways, this was just something that I had on my chest for a while. But I mean, who knows? Maybe it's me that's missing something. Anyways, this was just a quick rant for me. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.